Welcome to the latest edition of the LL Basketball Roundtable from the fabulous Broadcast Center at the LNP Media Group. My name is Mike Gross of that same organization, and we're going to be talking about Lancaster 11 League Basketball as we roll into, we're kind of past the beginning stage of the season and into the meat of it. Seated to my left is John Walk, who covers boys basketball for uh, our publications. And seated to my right is the estimable and okay. healthier than ever, Yay. Jeff Reinhardt, who covers the girls game. Uh, every week we start out with a visit to one of the Lancaster 11 League schools to talk to some kids and talk to some coaches and talk hoops. John took that responsibility this week and went to his alma mater. That's right. And before anybody thinks, oh, John's just a homer going to Penn Manor, I was trying to look around for schools that over the last, this is what, year three of the show that we haven't visited yet. Um, it's early in the season for Penn Manor year there. As we record this 0-2 in the league, 1-3 and overall, um, all their losses um, have come by double-digit margins. But John's a homer. A little bit. I should say, you know, in my interaction with other coaches across the league, and they talk about, hey, Larry Bell, you the head coach there, man. Can he coach up the guys? Maybe he might. That is have a universal play. sentiment. Sure. Yeah. It really is. Yeah. And uh, as I found out, and as we'll talk about more when we when we go out to Millersville here, they're missing their top two players either Ooh. to injury or illness right now. But okay, maybe they'll struggle early on. But watch out for the comments on the back yeah. half of the league schedule. I really think they're going to be trouble. So with that in mind, we'll go out to Penn Manor, uh, caught up with a couple comments players and head coach Larry Bellio. Yeah, coach. So coming into this season, what were the pieces that you had coming back? What were your kind of expectations going into camp? Well, we had, we had uh, Cameron Carroll and Ethan Benny back with guys with good varsity experience from last year. Uh, we had a couple guys that had minor roles, so, you know, we, we had a pretty nice summer. Uh, guys started coming together and, you know, we, we, we had some success. And uh, so the idea was we probably, we could pick up and, you know, get off to a good start. Uh, for us right now, it's, it's, it's injury bug and sickness. Um, you know, even though this is not the quote unquote COVID year, this year has actually been worse for us from the loss of player time than, than last year. So, so young guys have to step up. A great opportunity. Nobody, nobody will be able to complain that they didn't get a chance. Great. I know you guys have been dealing with some injuries and illnesses along the way, but still it's been 11 days into the start of the season as we record this. What's kind of been the, the growing pains that you've experienced so far and how are you guys kind of working out the kinks? Well, we got a couple of young guys that are coming in like helping out the team. We got Demir starting now in Ethan's place. We're going to have some guys step up tomorrow in KC's absence. So just the younger guys have just been stepping up into new roles. How tough is section one this year? You've been playing um, these groups for many years and we're just kind of just now getting to see them um, as far as Hemfield Township, McCaskey, Crest goes. Where, where does Penn Matter fit in? Uh, I think if we do our job as a team, we could fit in pretty good and have competitive games. But it's just like being as a team and working together, then we could keep up with other guys too. Is there a, an overall theme, like for instance, Manheim Township football seems to have like a theme to motivate their guys. A couple years ago, it was like burn the boats. Um, does, does Penn Manor basketball have anything like that as far as motivational tricks or anything? Yeah, we have one for like the team this year. It's like play hard and get better every day. All right. Are you superstitious in any way? Do you wear the same pair of socks or anything? Uh, good luck charms? Um, same routine before the game, anything like that? Uh, no, not really. I wear this wristband now every game. So, what does that represent? I don't know. I had a really good game in it, so <laughs> now I'm just gonna keep wearing it. Thanks, John and Comets. Let's talk a little bit about what we've seen lately. I've seen some interesting stuff lately. Ryan's, how about you? <laughs> I have. Uh, the girls game has been mighty interesting here the first full week whatever we are week week and a half yeah um amazingly i don't know how i pulled this off but i've seen every team in section two already i've, I've seen lebanon i've seen uh warwick i've seen cv i've seen e-town i i've i've seen everybody in yeah, section but aren't two. There like 11 sections it's not that big <laughs> something like that yeah there's a lot um the section two race is going to be very fascinating yeah that's i think on both both yeah. boys and girls. Yeah. I kind of pegged that a couple of weeks ago with the previews. E-Town and Ephrata have dominated it there the last couple of years. Ephrata's kind of struggling. They're yeah, like they one are. And they're one and four. Yeah. E-Town has a loss. Yeah. Very surprising. 
I saw CV on Monday night. They're a lot of fun. I really like the Bucks. They're spunky. And I finally got to see Lebanon, and I saw Miss Korea, and you were there as well. Yeah, we got I to was see there for a while. I stopped in for a little while. Yeah. And she's a really nice looking player. I mean, she's, you know, five foot nothing, but she's she is just fantastic point guard. She gives them something that is pretty rare yeah. in, in high school basketball. Yeah. When, when she's on the floor, they're not going to kick the ball around. No, they don't turn it over. She is a rock with the ball. Yeah. For a freshman, Pretty yeah. impressive. And she could, I mean, she's averaging like 17 points, but yeah. she could probably average like 25 if she wanted to, but she really distributes well, and she's she's a ton of fun to watch. Uh, best game I saw last week, Saturday, I, I gassed up the car and went to Gettysburg for the Maryland-Pennsylvania shootout showcase, yeah. which was fun. I saw Maryland basketball, and I didn't know this till I got there. Maryland, all levels, Boys, girls used the shot clock. Shot clock. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't know that, but there was no shot clock in Gettysburg. I didn't realize how much of the country uses the shot clock in high school basketball until I started looking into this whole thing, which I'm eventually going to write about. Anyway, I was watching the games with the Maryland teams to see how they were. Did, did, did they speed up? But they all, all of them kind of slowed down, like they weren't in a hurry because their minds are probably shot clock. Get a oh, shot, but I thought they were a little okay. more slower, and they tried to set yeah, it up and run an offense. Yeah. Lancaster Catholic it just was dynamite. They played um, St. John's Prep from Maryland, which was a good-looking team, and they would probably do pretty well around here. Had size, had athletes, had shooters, had a slasher kid who was really, really good. Ferguson, I think her name was. But anyway, Lancaster Catholic played great. Lights out. Jariah Johnson, hat tip. Jerry's, uh, daughter. Jerry's daughter is playing out of her years. mind, making three. She scored 20. And Catholic. they're missing some key pieces even, right? Yeah, like Mary Valeski, the, the really terrific sophomore point guard who had a great freshman year last season. She has an ankle, so she should be back. Knock on glass, probably maybe over the holidays. She yeah. could be back oh, for okay. their holiday well, tournament. Well, that's not so bad. Then. So yeah. she'll be back pretty soon. So interesting weeks. There, there's some good stuff going on. And I'm sorry we just happened to record on Tuesday, but the two kind of games of the week are both Tuesday night, so we'll see how these turn out. Mannheim Township at Hemfield for first place in Section 1. Mannheim Central at Garden Spot, probably the early Resurgent surprise. Garden Resurgent Spot. Resurgent Garden Spot yeah. for first place in Section 3. Yeah, this is a pretty big Tuesday. Tonight is a pretty yeah. big night in the league uh, on both uh, sides. John? What do you got, man? What do we Boys got? Who, well, what do you see? Uh, coming into this week, there was three remaining unbeaten teams, as it were, in the girls. Uh, yeah. On the boys' side, Hemfield, Lampier, Strasburg, and Columbia. Of those three, me and Mike uh, have seen two of those in Hemfield and LS. More recently, Lampier, Strasburg. Let's talk about their Monday game, 86. 71 win at Conestoga Valley. A couple notes yeah. and I'll throw it to you. Uh, 86 points for Lampier Strasburg is now this season's high water mark mm -hmm. for LL Elite Team single game points. Was previously 79 by Acarrera. And then the other thing, man, 14 three pointers made by wow. LS. Uh, the most in a single game by an LL team so far this season. Previous was followed by Ellis and Cocalico. Wow. So it's proving to be true early that there's a lot of scorers, there's a yeah. lot of three-point shooters are in this league, yeah. especially Lampier Strasburg. It seems like every guy can make the three and put the ball on the floor. What did you make of the Pioneers? Well, first of all, not only 14 threes by LS, but 11 by Conestoga <laughs> by CV. They had, wow. These teams combined for 25 threes in the first half. Wow. If, if my statistics keeping are correct, which is a shaky proposition, but LS shot 19 for 26 with 10 three-pointers. How do you stop that? And wow. scored 50 yeah. in the first half. Wow. Um, it was a very entertaining game. I'm sure that neither of those teams are where they're going to want to be in March defensively. And I think that might be an issue for our teams a little bit when we get to the postseason, when, they, when we find really big athletic teams. It's going to be a challenge. But right now, there's so many kids in the league that can score. I yeah. mean, even, if you look at LS, it, interestingly, um, they have this terrific sophomore guard, uh, Ty Burton, who might be the best player in the league. Wow. He's really something. But... Teams are going to try to deny him the ball. They're going to try to get physical with him because he looks like a 12-year-old kid. <laughs> but they have a couple other guys who can run the show, take care of the ball, make decisions. Uh, and they don't need him to have the ball in his hands all the time. That's one of the really nice things about their team. Anyway, 
This was a really entertaining game. Great crowd, student sections going nuts. Uh, a lot of a lot of newspaper reading in the crowd, surprisingly, which uh, uh, I thought that, I thought newspapers were dead, and frankly, I thought reading was dead. I guess not. But anyway, this was this was a really entertaining game. LS ends up winning by 15. Conestoga Valley, pretty good. Yeah. A lot of dudes that can put it in the basket. Yeah, yeah, CV has like four guys who can score. They have a big guy down low in Titus York. But again, that's section two where you have the defending league champ, uh, Lebanon. E-Town's kind of figured some things out. They beat yeah. CV last Friday night. Uh, Warwick is, again, going to be good right there with one of the best players in the league in Tate Landis. So I'm yep. writing about later this week. Check out that story. Yeah, that um, race in both both boys and girls, that section race should be really interesting. Section two. Oh, yeah, okay. and a, a couple other nuggets that I want to mention on the boys' side as far as, okay, we mentioned some scorers, and then – a couple that surprised me, Brock Oldak at Mannheim Township, the younger brother of Zach Oldak. This Oldak, the younger one, seems to be the better of the two when it comes to basketball anyway. Put up 24 points last week. I think they've had four different players uh, be their, their leading scorer at the end of the game so far to Township. And then uh, McCaskey, I think it was at Penn Manor last Friday. Okay, uh, talking to Coach Bell, you, um, when we were out there earlier this week, said we took away their, we tried to take away their top two players and John Burke, Hassan Williams. So yeah. then Shamel Burke, the number three guy, steps up 24 points. So wow. it seems like you know, Section 1 teams are kind of figuring things out as far as some, okay, we have we know what these pieces are. What about these other guys kind of mixing in? How many teams in the league have had their third or fourth option right. offensively have a 20-point game already? Yeah. That's, that's happened a lot. Huh. The, uh, you mentioned the undefeated teams. Girls side, Hemfield, Columbia, Lancaster, Country Day. And this is coming start in the Tuesday. The yeah, start the week undefeated. Country Day, I, I got to mention, Devon Pinkard, who we all know from McCaskey in Delaware, Rookie coach there, 5-0 and start. They've been fantastic. Um, milestones, because you got to mention milestones. Uh, Maddie Nyer from Mannheim Central, the junior, who's fantastic. Uh, she went over 800 career points last week. So she's she should get to 1,000 probably in January at her rate. Um, she's been fantastic. John Myers, E-Town coach, needs three wins for 100. There's a couple other people that are inching up on some other ones. But Myers is getting close to 100. Mention the scoring. The girls, the girls scoring too is way up. And just off the top of my head, Bree Draggy. This is the Columbia Draggy Twins yeah. segment of the show. Yeah. Bree's at 24 a game. Genesis Meadows from Country Day, 22 a game. Brooke Draggy, the other twin, tick under 20 a game. So the twins are averaging like 46 points a game between them, which is really good. And uh, Kyla Correa at Lebanon's at 17 and a half a game. So scoring is up. I at see least for the now, side. the offenses are ahead of the defense. I think that's so. Right. I think that's a theme alert. Talk holiday tournaments. Yeah, that's what yeah, I was going to say next. Uh, yeah, because let's, let's talk about uh, it's the most wonderful time of the year. Yeah, it is. So we've got holiday tournaments. Let's uh, run down a little bit of that. Yeah, we got to figure out what in the heck we're going to do next week because there's a bunch of tournaments, and I think four or five of them are really worth covering. We're not going to be able to get to every one. Uh, Cedar Crest. Uh, Palmyra, Exeter, Crest, Lebanon, um, Hemfield is hosting tournaments, Century York, Bish McDevitt, Hemfield and Wilson, McCaskey has their Hagel Gans of Vernus tournament. Um, they have York High, Thomas Mastery, McCaskey, Harrisburg, and then Solanco is an all LL League uh, holiday tournament. Conestoga Valley, Manheim Central, Solanco and Penn Manor. So nice. that's my quick rundown on those. I'm still trying to figure out where in the world we're going to go because the, the, at least two of the, those four are some really awesome teams and a couple others are, are wow. going to have some really good games. Nice. There's only, about, two, there's only two girls teams that are not playing in yeah. holiday tournaments, Cocalico and LS. And LS has a non-league game next week. Um, <laughs> the, the, the two that I have circled, Lancaster Catholic, they have a neat holiday tournament, which they only just started last year, year before. Well, there was no holiday tournaments last year. Uh, Catholic plays Ephrata, which is interesting. That's a really good LL battle. Lancaster Mennonite is in that tournament, and Central Bucks West is coming oh. up from Doylestown to play in that. So, depending how it shakes out, you could see a Catholic CB West final, which would be fascinating because right. CB West is really good. And the other, the other game, the other first round game I'm I'm curious about is Garden Spot against Warwick at Warwick's tournament. A couple LLs, backyard rivals. I got to see Garden Spot soon here. I, I, I want to see if they're for real. Uh, Country Day, the, uh, the, uh, one of the undefeateds, they're playing way over in Halifax. Henfield wow. is playing in the York Suburban Tournament, I want to say, and they play Donegal in the first round. Um, I'd like to drop in on the Lebanon Tournament. Lebanon's in that, Northern Lebanon, McCaskey. 
Uh, there's games all week, Monday through Thursday, so it should be a lot of fun. I'll be all over the place. Check your local listings for all this holiday hoop activity. Yes. There's plenty of it. Uh, I think we've covered everything, guys. I think yeah. so. Uh, Thursday night, last thing from me. Thursday night, Penn Manor at Columbia. Fun game. Oh, okay. Comets. There you go. Uh, and I, my first look at Columbia this season live. And Penn Manor's off to a pretty good start here, too. So Columbia Manor. boys and girls. We're going to have to get uh, on both of those stories. Yeah, I was, yes. was going to cover Columbia York Catholic boys on Wednesday. That game is now postponed being rescheduled. So we'll <laughs> catch the tide at some point this yeah, season. Absolutely. All right. This has been the LL Basketball Roundtable brought to you by Thaddeus Stevens College of Technology. It's Mike Gross. It's John Walk. It's Jeff Reinhardt. Merry, Merry Christmas, Christmas, everybody. See you later.